Hello friends, today I will tell you the summary of the Art of Seduction book and 24 rules have been given in it by which you can seduce anyone. It depends on you whether seduction is right or wrong for you. If you two are in a relationship with someone in life, if you want to use seduction, this book summary may be useful to you. We think more about what we want from others than what they want from us. Our attempts at seduction usually do not last that long. You can't attract someone just based on your charming personality or by occasionally doing something nice or charming. Seduction is a process that happens over time. The longer you take it, the slower it will be. The further you move, the deeper you will be able to enter the mind of your victim. This is an art which requires patience, focus, and strategic thinking. You will always have to be one step ahead of your target and will have to upset their balance. There are 24 chapters in this part which will give you strategic thinking. The chapters are laid out in a sequence that goes from initial contact with your victim to successful conclusion. This sequence is based on some eternal rules of human psychology 24 ways of seduction. The first rule is choose the right victim, know who what to attract and who not to waste your time on. Everything depends on the aim of your seduction. Study your victims thoroughly and choose only those who are sensitive to your attraction. The right victims are those who are into you. Look for something unique. They are often isolated or unhappy or can be easily made to do so because it is almost impossible to seduce a completely satisfied person. The perfect victim has certain qualities that inspire strong emotions in you which leads to your selective tricks seem more natural and dynamic. Book author Robert Greene says that your target should be someone for whom you can fill a void in their life. Don't try to get the most out of people who are just trying to please you. Very curious, the true victim is a person who excites you in a way that cannot be explained in words, whose influence on you has nothing to do with superficiality, who often has a quality you lack, and who is also secret jealous. There may be some tension. The victim may be a little afraid of you and may even dislike you a bit. Be more creative in choosing your victim. Of course, this means nothing if the potential victim is not open to your influence. The first person test do this once you feel that she is also insecure towards you, then the hunting can start. How do you recognize your victims? The way they respond to you, you should not pay so much attention to their conscious responses, instead pay more attention to those reactions. Give something that is beyond conscious control, like an unusual shine, maybe even a glimpse of anger or resentment. You should generally avoid people who are busy with business or work. Seduction demands attention and busy people have little in mind for you. The second rule is create false sense of security approach indirect. If your target notices that you are manipulating them or they are following your wishes, then they will turn against you when it comes to seduction indirect. It's a great tool to have if you want to. Start a relationship with someone who will be valuable to you. If you approach them and demand something right away, you force them to increase their security by making a proposal. Reach out to them through a third party or develop a neutral or friendly relationship before making it about business. Make the target feel safe, then attack. First of all, your friendly conversation with your targets will help you understand their characters, their tastes, their weaknesses. It will give you valuable information about the childhood desires that control their adult behavior. By spending the second time with your target, you can make them comfortable with you. Recognizing that you are only interested in their fellowship with their thoughts, they will lower their resistance to you, causing the general tension to dissipate. Once this feeling is aroused, they will wonder why you did not take any steps and will not be able to handle this confusion. They will take the initiative themselves while enjoying the feeling that they are in control. There is nothing more effective in seduction than making the seduced person feel that they are not the ones doing the seducing. The first step to mastery is easy. Once you once you choose the right person, you have to bring the target closer to you. If in the initial stages you can make your target think that they are the one taking the first approach, then you have won the game. You can also play cat and mouse with them. You can play by first showing interest and then withdrawing never mention any feelings. Your team will wonder why you never discuss your feelings, learn to hide your emotions, and let people find out that you what's in the mind in all areas of life you should never give the impression that you are striving for something. This will create a resistance that you cannot reduce. Learn to approach people externally. Indirect approach carefully constructed selection your victory may reduce numbers but will be compensated by their quality. The third rule is send mixed signals. Once you have attracted someone, make yourself mysterious to keep that person's interest. Don't reveal too much about intentions. Once people become aware of your presence and perhaps vaguely interested, 
You need to pique their interest before focusing on anything else. The obvious may attract their attention at first, but that attention is often short-term. For the long-term ambiguity or ambiguity is far more powerful. Most are much more obvious rather than being hard to detect send mixed signals both harsh and gentle both spiritual and half-hearted both innocent and cunning a mixture of qualities suggests depth that confuses as well as seduces a magical mysterious aura, inspires people to want to know more and draws them into your circle. Create such power by hinting at something contradictory within yourself. To deepen their interest you need to hint at the complexity that a or you can't figure out in two weeks that the key to both attracting and maintaining attention is to be mysterious and no one is naturally into mystery. At least not for long. Mysteriousness is something you have to work on. There is a trick from the side and something that should be used in seduction right from the beginning. Let a part of your character show so that everyone will pay attention to it but also send a mixed signal that you are not what you seem. A paradox if this quality is negative like threat cruelty or morality don't worry people will be attracted to mystery anyway and pure goodness is rarely attractive the fourth rule is to appear to be an object of desire don't fool yourself but don't be polite when you're trying to win someone over. Show off your most important connections and successes. We want what other people want. To get our victims close to us and make them cling to us, make them hungry. You have to create an atmosphere of desirability to be desired and respected by many people, to become the favorite subject of their attention, to make you stand out from the crowd of admirers. It will become a point of pride for them. Create the illusion of popularity by surrounding yourself with members of the opposite sex, friends, ex-lovers, current lovers. Create triangles that encourage competition and increase your value. Build a reputation that surpasses yours if many there must be several reasons why people have succumbed to your charms. The most effective way to create that illusion is to create a triangle. Bring another person between you and your victim and subtly tell your victim that this other person is not interested in you. How much is wanted? The third point on the triangle should not be about just one person. Surround yourself with admirers. Reveal your past victories. In other words, cover yourself in an aura of desirability. Desirability is a social illusion. The fifth rule is create a need star. Anxiety and discontent if people are complacent, they can't be swayed. Sell yourself by giving examples of ways in which the other party lacks some respect, and then explain how you can make up for that lack in your target's mind. Stress and confusion must arise. Create within them feelings of dissatisfaction with their situations and themselves. The feelings of inadequacy you create will give you room to push yourself so that they will see you as the answer to their problems. Pain and anxiety is a proper precursor to pleasure. Learn to create a need that you can satisfy. As a seducer, you should never mistake a person's appearance for reality. People are always susceptible to being seduced because in reality, everyone lacks the feeling of completeness. They feel something missing inside. Remember, most of us are lazy. Overcoming your boredom or feeling of inadequacy requires a lot of effort. Letting someone else do the work is both easier and more exciting. Make you feel more deeply innocently bring it up and talk about it corporations and politicians know they can't get their public to buy what the public wants to buy without instilling a sense of need and discontent among the public. Cannot get people to do or do what they want them to do makes the public unsure of their identity this is as true for groups or nations as it is for individuals cannot mislead the public without making them feel guilty the sixth law master the art of. Insinuation it is important to make your targets feel disgruntled and in need of your attention, but if you are too obvious or direct they will see through your point and become defensive. However, there is no known defense against insinuation except for elusiveness. The art of planting ideas in a person's mind that take root after a few days and even become visible to him as his own thoughts. Signals are the supreme means of influencing people. Create a sublanguage. Come back again after making a bold statement and apologies vague comments combined with charming glances sayings that penetrate the target's unconscious to convey your true meaning make everything thought-provoking the slightest physical contact triggers desire such as a moment's delicate but memorable look or an unusually warm tone of voice. Both a passing comment for a few moments reveals something about the victim. You're interested in something, but keep it subtle your words are revealing a possibility creating a doubt slips of the tongue. Apparently unintentional sleep on it comments, attractive references, statements, you immediately apologize for all of these are immense. 
The power of signaling to be successful in your projections is to do it when your targets are most relaxed or distracted so that they have no idea what's going on. Gentle banter is often perfect for this. The idea is that people will be wondering what you will say next or that you are engrossed in your thoughts. Hence, suggestions and innuendos create a seductive atmosphere. Remember, to plant an attractive idea, you have to tap into people's imaginations, their deepest desires. People love that suggestion. Are what they want to hear happiness, money, health, the possibility of adventure, these good things end up being exactly what you present them to the seventh rule is enter their spirit if you're trying to change people's minds. First get into their play by the rules. Start by being their mirror and they will open up to you. Most people remain closed in their own world, which makes them stubborn and difficult to convince. It is important to bring them out of their shell and establish your seduction. The way to do it is to enter into their soul. Play by their rules. They enjoy what they do. Enjoy it. Adapt yourself to their mood. By doing this, you will break down their deep-rooted narrow-mindedness and lower their defenses. Hypnotized by the mirror image you present, they will open up and become sensitive to your subtle influence. Soon you can change the dynamics. Once you have entered their soul, you can make them enter your soul at a time when it will be too late to turn back and fulfill the desire. Don't give them a chance to react or protest. Of all the seductive tricks, getting into someone's spirit is probably the most devilish. It makes your victims feel like they are seducing you. Our lives a big source of frustration is the stubbornness of other people to reach out to them. How hard it is to get them to see things our way. Paradoxically, the way to get people out of the shell is to become like them, in fact a kind of mirror of them. The image is when you are reflecting someone don't stop at the person they have become. Enter into the spirit of the ideal person they want to become. The eighth rule is create temptation. Drive the target deeper into your temptation by creating the appropriate temptation. Catch a glimpse of the pleasures to come. Find that weakness, that fantasy that hasn't been realized yet, and signal that you can lead them there. It could be money. It could be an adventure. It could be a forbidden or guilty pleasure. The main thing is to keep it indirect. Keep it vague. Let the message come with it. Let the curiosity be stronger than the worries and they will start following you. Determine. Find out what your target's weaknesses are and play accordingly. Robert Greene writes, Find an ideal that this person is trying to achieve and hint that you can lead them to that. What people want is not temptation. It happens every day that people want to give in to the temptation. So your job is to create a temptation that is stronger than the daily variety. It has to be focused on them individually. It has to be focused on their weakness. But understand that everyone has a main weakness. Find that childhood insecurity in their life and try to woo them that you have their weakness. Their weakness may be greed, pride, boredom, some deeply repressed desire, hunger for forbidden fruit, their past and special form. From their past romances, Suragonda Nakapa, that they know what to expect from you, your spell on them breaks. The only way to take the seduced forward and keep the edge is to create suspense, a perfect surprise direction, thrill the victim by making sudden changes in. Temptation, you need to create constant tension and mystery. A feeling that anything will happen to you is predictable. You are creating drama in real life, so put your creative energy into it. Have some fun, but best of all surprises are those that reveal something new about your character. This needs to be established. Appear somewhere unexpectedly. Say or do something suddenly and people will not have time to understand that your move was well thought out. If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, then surprisingly unsurprisingly if you are giving a presentation, attract the audience by telling them what they want to hear. Make your logic enjoyable. The key to seductive language is not the words you speak or your seductive tone. It is a radical change in your habits. The difference between normal language and seductive language is like the difference between noise and music. Learn to sniff out the parts of your ego that need validation. Surprising. Something that no one has thought about before. Something that you can describe as a talent or positive quality that others notice. Have not spoken slightly trembling as if your target's attraction has overwhelmed you and made you emotional. The feelings you are trying to arouse should be strong. Do not talk about friendship and disagreement. Do not talk about love and hate. It's important to talk BA and try to feel some of the emotions you're trying to evoke. Seductive language should have a kind of boldness that can cover a multitude of sins. Somehow I don't think others. The party made a wise decision say we deserve better or they mess things up. Positive language is active language filled with verbs that are imperatives and short sentences I believe.
Bold ending instead of awkwardly or timidly avoiding what you really want, says Robert Greene. The 24th rule is be aware of the after effects once you've succeeded in your seduction, others to prevent the party from taking you for granted and making you disposable. The above tips need to be modified to some extent. Danger arises after a successful seduction. Emotions, once reach their peak, often go in the opposite direction. Laziness and mistrust. Towards disappointment if you have to separate, make the sacrifice quickly and suddenly. If necessary, break the spell you have deliberately created. If you want to remain in a relationship, be careful of the increasing energy flow of familiarity that will spoil the fantasy. If the game is to continue, a second seduction is required. Never rely on your physical attractiveness. Even beauty loses its charm with repeated exposure. Only strategy and effort will fight inertia. Maintain mystery acquaintance. Moho, remember reality isn't sexy. Keep some dark corners in your character. Maintain some suspense. Keep it light. 
Addiction is a game, not a matter of life and death. If breaking up with the victim is too messy or difficult, then the next best thing is to do it. Do deliberately break the magic that binds him to you. Once you have attracted a person or nation, there is almost always a peace and a slight disappointment which sometimes leads to separation. However, the same goal of attracting again. It's surprisingly easy to do. Old feelings never go away. They lie dormant, and in one fell swoop you can surprise your target. So there you have it all, 24 rules. And now I hope it helps you. All the rules will definitely be useful somewhere. Seduction is not a bad thing, but you have to see on whom and for what purpose you have to use it. Any art used in the wrong way cannot be right. Many times it is used to attract others. For this you have to adopt some tricks, and there is nothing wrong in IT.S. Oh here this book summary of the art of seduction also ends. Now I take leave from you. Then I will meet you with a new book summary thanks you.